turn off your television sets, turn them off now, turn them off right now, turn them off and leave them off, turn them off right in the middle of the sentence I'm speaking to you now, turn them off! Greetings from a place that is not in Alaska. I want to start this off by saying hello. This will be the best ever because I am leading the pod today. Um, I know my co-host pretty well when it comes to these types of things. And I could tell by the tone of our uh, messages related to the pod that we are slowly losing my dear friend. So what I am going to do is use my charm and charisma to keep him engaged I know that he won't disappoint me and he will answer my questions to keep this pod rolling. He, by the way, is Ronnie. Say hi. Yeah. He's so excited. I can tell. Um, (laughs) We're going to get this party started. Am I gone? Oh, I'm back. How'd you feel about the episode? Did you love it? Was it your favorite? Um... So I, I, I guess if I if I am to start, um, we're in episode three, the six episode run, and I feel like this is gonna piss a lot of people off, but I don't care. I feel like this um, mini series or whatever we're gonna call it is starting to have the MCU problem, where if if it wasn't connected to a popular property, would you be interested? And and I think that's a good answer to ask because if the answer is no, then that means what's underneath, the story underneath isn't particularly good enough. And that's what I'm starting to feel. Like this case really, like as we, it's funny, as we go deeper is really like losing my interest. Um, the characters, I think they can be interesting, but I don't think, we've done a good job establishing them or establishing their relationship. So this episode um, was a bit of a step back because I was, I was starting to be in uh, episode two. I was like, okay, episode two is going somewhere, but this didn't feel like a slow burn. It just felt like, yeah, we kind of don't have a strong story to tell. That's just my opinion though opinion it was a uh, scathing review from run i've heard worse but yeah that was pretty that was a nice way of saying it was ass um i, I did, but... not, <laughs> did not dislike the episode but to your point watching it felt like and i'm gonna say it again because i can't help but make the comparisons it felt like yellow jackets and the reason that's not a good thing is because that's not the show we are watching. We're watching True Detective. And this being that it's taking such a um, such a huge leap towards the supernatural, towards the spiritual, it's, it's deviating a little bit from this being an actual real life case that can be solved by the people also watching or can be, you know, we can kind of get involved. I don't hate it. I'm not necessarily mad at it. I just, uh, I think the problem that I am having is I don't really know how to watch it. And I hope that makes sense to people because like, for instance, if I'm watching a dark comedy and I know it's supposed to be, I, I watch it differently than I would if I'm watching something that I believe is actually a, a, a drama or a crime show or whatever else. So with this, it's kind of weird because I don't know if I'm watching a supernatural show or if I'm watching something where I'm supposed to be looking at it as mental illness. That may be what they're going for, though. I don't know. And but... I will say that. Uh, if, if, I could, if I could just interject. Yeah, quickly. go ahead. So I feel like that's another thing that they aren't doing well. They haven't established these themes well enough to really play with them. So when you say you don't know if it's the supernatural or if it's real, like I haven't even seen. All right. So they did a little bit of it this episode, but once again, like it's, it's, it it doesn't feel natural because I feel like they they haven't done a good job setting these things up. Like it's almost like, uh, this is going to sound pretty pejorative, but 
this season feels like a cover band. Like, yeah, they're playing the hits, but it's not like original music. You know, it's like the 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 tropes are here, but it's not like it's not really interwoven, and it's not like really connecting in a way that it it should be. Okay, fair. I think that's a fair assessment. We'll get to the part that I think is the is really what sets you off. Oh well, no, because you. You were done probably halfway through. So we'll start with, um, we got an introduction to Annie, at least. We got to see who she was and what she was doing. Uh, She was a doula, or she was surrounded by doulas, and she was pretty much heading up a birthing center in, um, it looks like it was mostly just for Native girls. Um, I won't say that's all it was, but that's who was there. It was a girl that was giving birth Mm -hmm. while she was there. The takeaway I had from that, though, was Evangeline. Um, she walked in and the girl giving the woman giving birth was automatically taken aback and didn't want Evangeline in there. Like mm-hmm. she didn't want Navarro in the space. She actually said, what's that bitch doing here? And I looked at her face and it looked like it it stung a little bit because not because she was a police officer, but almost like because of that, she's also not a part of that community, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which she is. So it's, it's like it's it. It looks like it's taking a toll on her because it she's being rejected by her community because she's something. It's almost like the the blue. That's what she is to them. She's blue. She's not. <laughs> she's not mm-hmm. native. She's not one of them. She's blue, and um, you can tell that she was really um happy to be a part of the the ceremony. Happy to be in there with them. Mm-hmm. And Annie, as soon as it was over, Annie was like, all right, let's roll. Like you, it, it's almost still like, yes, we're allowing you to be in this space right now because we want her calm and we need to get this done, but you're still not one of us. And mm. I I wonder how much of that is is driving her to solve Annie's case too. Not not just because she's a police officer, of course she wants to solve she wants to solve it, but I wonder how much of that, meaning like how much does she think that she owes it to her community as well? Yeah, and um, I, I think it's no coincidence that we get a bit of her backstory today when she was, well, not today, this episode, excuse me, when she was talking to Kavik and she was like, yeah, she moved away, and then she moved back, and then he was like, yeah, Alaska girls always move back, and it's because, like, I think um, that bit of her identity is missing, and she's really wanting to connect with it, so that's why it means so much to her. Yeah, and and I think it's not, because it's not just the it's not just Ennis it's like that part of her is also a part of her mom you know her sister so Mm -hmm. it's all those things that kind of pull her in um Hank Pryor oh I also wanted to mention did you notice the dates it looks like it's going to end on Christmas if it goes the way it's supposed to go the last episode Mm -hmm. will be Christmas day okay Uh, or Christmas night (laughs) whatever it always freaks me out when he says good morning because I'm like oh crap it doesn't it doesn't it's night it's always night um yeah Hank Pryor we mentioned him before and we were saying from the previews and what we were saying at the very beginning, it seemed like he was a bit suspicious. I think he's very suspicious now. And Mm -hmm. mostly because when he, first of all, he's a police officer that, and he knows better than to just grab random people and say, Hey, let's go Mm -hmm. hunt this person. And um, the fact that um, Navarro was like, well, we want him alive. He's like, well, do we? I'm thinking, yeah. "Yeah." From the jump, I was like, oh, like, this is two separate missions because they're hunting and everyone else is search and rescue. Absolutely. But yeah, and it's in my biggest thing is even if you're upset with this man, you have no idea why he wasn't in the corpse circle. You have no Mm. clue. You are assuming that he's done something. And this isn't about Annie either, because if that was the case, you would have done something back then right when when annie's case was the big deal you're hunting him now which makes it look very 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 odd because you don't want him telling you anything i would i would think a detective would want somebody that can tell them what happened he doesn't seem interested at all he seems to think that if i find um clark dead or alive looks like he mostly wants him dead then that's the end of the case. I've solved the case. You haven't solved anything. Well, also, we, we got to remember that he's the one who um, received the call back in the day on the original case. 
Mm -hmm. Very good point. And what was that call, if you recall? Um, it, it was like it was details about about Annie, right? Mm -hmm. It was detailing that he had a relationship, that Clark had a relationship with Annie. Right. And he ignored it. Now, tell me if you got the same thing. From what I understand, it looked like Hank may have been chief before or for whatever reason, he had the power to remove Dammer. So maybe he was just above her in station because she said he kicked me off the case. I always thought she was talking about, what's his name? Collins? Collum? 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 Matt. What's Matt's name? Ted. Yeah, I don't think his name is. Yeah. Yeah. I was about to say, I don't think his name is Collum at all, but it's yeah, someone. It's Ted. Ted. What is it? Ted what? It's Ted. It's Ted. It's Ted. His last name. Yeah. Yeah. Ted though. Ted. <laughs> I thought Ted was the one that kicked her off the case when she kept saying he. That's what I assumed, but she meant Hank. Mm -hmm. So there's something again that's that's even more suspicious. Like not only is he want he he's got this, like you said, a hunting crew trying to find Clark. He knows who Clark is. He knew about the relationship. He wants him dead, seems for some reason. He took Navarro mm -hmm. off the case and he withheld information. All of it is just Weird. Oh, and he kept the files and didn't want to give them to Danvers. Mm. So it's all looking very weird. I don't know what's going on, but yeah, the like, next thing. Go ahead. Yeah, I was about to say at this point, like surely he has to be like the red herring, though, right? I feel like he has to. I I, I feel like we're making him look so suspicious that we're going to find out he's really not that sus like suspicious at all. He's just an idiot. He's probably I mean, just an idiot. Very plausible. I uh, I mean the and and that can be explained with the mail order bride thing. So I, I just think he's just an idiot. Me too, because that's definitely a scam. Um, you know what's weird though? How that that I, I I say is weird, and I find it funny. No one ever believes that Navarro is spiritual. They're always surprised when they mm -hmm. find out that she prays or that she believes in God and that she believes that we're not well. I take that back. She does believe we're alone, but she believes God is too. But everybody is so shocked every time she says it. And it's tripping me out. I'm like, why are y'all so surprised? Because, because again, the community is spiritual. Oh, hmm. uh, you know, with the throat singing, with the with the with the meetings, with the spiritual, I mean with the birthing centers, they're all a close-knit community hmm. led in a spiritual fashion. So I guess again. Not only do the the native women not see her as part of the community, no one else does either. It's like she's mm -hmm. the only person that realizes, "Hey, I'm, I'm, I'm here. This is this. These people are just like I'm. I'm one of those." It's kind of like you know how you how people feel like you're one of the safe black people. You're you're the safe ones. That's what it, mm -hmm. that's what this giving for her. Um, now, you want to talk about Dan Danvers in Navarro's case? With the uh, abusive man, yeah. So, so that was our um, another, I guess, callback to a True Detective, where you know the detective is telling the story, but the story we see is the story we're hearing. So, so yeah. Um, obviously, um, Devers and Navarro, they break in on this guy the, the version that we're hearing is that it was a murder suicide but when we get there we see um the guy willer is still sitting in a chair laughing and indeed his his wife is dead but um he's not yet dead little does he know he's about to be and it's because yeah we're led to believe devers kills him now um i will s hmm. so I guess let me ask this. So is, is this the case that made them split apart? Because mm -hmm. um I don't know, like maybe I'm having a, a misread of Navarro's character, but I thought she kind of would have been like, well, justice is served. Or, and this is a wild take. She's the one that did it. That's see, see, that's what that's why I was thinking because we don't actually see who goes through with it. Mm -hmm. They're purposefully like leaving out the mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. did it. And if you if you 
pay attention to the way um, Danvers is telling the story. She says, you know, she just couldn't, Navarro just, just couldn't get over it. And she kept saying we should have done something and we could have done something. And if you go back to um, Peter asking what Danvers did, you know, she was just like, you, you scared you're going to fuck up. Just don't fuck up. That's major. Mm-hmm. And it could be one of those things where, you know, she's like, you didn't you didn't have the right to do that. And I feel like I, I would I wouldn't be surprised if Navarro was the one that actually did it. And they're just leading us to believe that it was her. But I wouldn't be surprised at all if they were like Danvers finally just because I mean, I'm sorry, not Danvers, but uh, Navarro did because she's like at this point. We didn't do anything to keep her safe. Mm. So the least we can do is make sure he doesn't get away with it and he can't do it to somebody else. I can see her mm-hmm. doing that because in her mind, that's justice. And I mean, it kind of is. You don't, we don't have the right to do it, but. Yeah. That, and that's why like, I was like, if, if someone is most likely to do that and, and to understand why, you know, I won't say understand and to justify that, I should say, instead of understand then then yeah, I figured it would have been Navarro. So I figured that cutaway is to like kind of lead us leave us in suspense because you're led to believe that it was Danvers, but I really feel like it was Navarro. And I would not I wouldn't be shocked at all. Um now Peter Navarro kept calling him freshman, and she was saying, like she kind of implied that um Danvers would get to him if he didn't run fast enough. <laughs> Excuse me. But um, his dad made a joke that she didn't find too funny about her being Miss Robinson. And of course, Peter's like, who is Miss Robinson? <laughs> who is Mrs. Robinson? But do you think he really believes that or is he just trying to get under her skin? Hank, I mean, do you think he really believes that Danvers is trying to, you know, like, I mean, seduce her son? I mean, his son? I mean, like, I, I, I'm I, just I'm just going to say this like you're in you're in Alaska. So I imagine like, <laughs> if, if you're if you're a woman of, you know, of, of certain needs, you, you got to go with the with the prospects available. So I say that to say I would not put it past her. And and it's not like it would matter that he's married because that seems to be her jam. I would hope That's that it exactly wouldn't be the case. <laughs> I would hope it wouldn't be the case because he's so young. Like he's almost like a protege, you know? Uh-huh. I would hope. Um so Leah. Um, every time I see Leah, it it makes me think more that Danvers is more than a little racist. And I don't know if she understands that or if she would consider mm-hmm. it racist, but she is. And it's kind of concerning because, again, you're and I guess Leah's what, 17. So she'll be she'll be out soon enough. But mm-hmm. it's just weird that you would be, first of all, with her dad and then raise this child, but still have these thoughts in your mind. And I know people do it all the time. They do. People raise people and they claim they love people, but they have these. um they're, they're racist, but what about the um? What what is it in Leah that's pulling her to? Well, I know her girlfriend is the one that's kind of getting her to go and mm-hmm. actually see what's going on and go and check it out. But I guess again, that's her community; these are her people, and she's being rebellious because you know she's a teenager. Do you think it's going to mean anything because she's she actually guilted really Danvers into going to see the woman who lost her baby earlier? Do you think she'll make a difference in any way in Danvers or is Danvers who she is? She's pretty old, right? Yeah, yeah, she's pretty old. And I don't know. I feel like, and once again, not justifying it, but I feel like Danvers, like real her version to her latching on to anything that's like of her indigenous culture is her way of like possibly showing regret about the Annie case. Mm. Because you know when she when she came in when she came in with the um you know with the marks on her chin like she was pissed about that 
Mm-hmm. And it's like, I guess in her mind, she's trying to save her because she knows that the the, the mind people are, are weird mm-hmm. and that there's beef. So if they know that it's almost like, you know, the Crips versus the Bloods or whatever else, I'm only using those because that's the first thing that came to my mind. But it's almost <laughs> like it's obviously two sides, you know? And if you have these distinguishing marks, then people will already know which side you're on outside of, you know, right. who you are anyway. So in her mind, I guess she thinks she's protecting her, but she's really just racist. Like she, she just is. She, um, back to Peter though. She, she needs no, no, and, and what's needs. and I want to make that very clear. Like she, she, she is, she is very racist. She's very racist. Yes, he needs to set some boundaries. Not she. Peter needs to set some boundaries because his wife is right. Mm-hmm. Um. And it pissed me off when he asked her, was she jealous of Danvers? Because I'm like, dude, don't do that. Don't don't do that because she's yeah. she's being reasonable. It's close to seven in the morning because she said she had an exam. You came in and woke up the baby. You sneaking in at all kinds of hours at night and you jump every time your phone rings because this lady has no boundaries. She'll call you at whatever time of day, whatever time of night and you'll go. That has nothing to do with me being jealous. That's me saying you are being disrespectful to me and our home mm-hmm. by just being her do boy. Really? That's beyond your job. This is just, you're doing it because it's her and she's doing it because she knows you will. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I don't know. I, I guess that's how the, the Miss Robinson part, it, it came back around, I guess. Although I, I'm praying that's not what it is. I think she just takes advantage because that's who she is. Um, but a lot of that stuff can wait. It can. Yeah. Just because you're lonely and you're up and you don't have anything to do, you shouldn't be calling and, and blocking. That's really what she's doing. Um, Peter is... Is he naive or is he just really just the sweet idiot that she says he is? I really hated that she called him that, but, you know, it is what it is. But what's yeah, your I take mean, on him as a person? I mean, he's just very eager which is like obviously great for her because she's like i'm gonna take advantage of that so yeah um for like a better term he is indeed that sweet idiot yeah he is okay so if Lane fell and uh bump and noggin pretty good when she did she woke up in this dream state i say dream state i'm sure she was unconscious in this dream state there was a child there holding a one-eyed polar bear and she said, mm-hmm. tell my mommy. And she just whispered. Any thoughts about that at all? What do you think that was? Like, I have no idea. I don't know if it was a, if it's a young Annie. I don't, I mean, not Annie. I don't know if it's a young Eve. I don't know if it's um, her sister. I don't know if it's just some random child because, you know, they see the dead in Ennis. So, yeah, I mean, is this I mean, a that, dead that child? To, I mean, that, that had to be um navarro right young navarro that's like that's what that yeah that's what i was thinking that's what i was thinking but tell my mommy what and who, who i don't know i i wish i had more on that i wish i had more thoughts or some idea of what that was about but i'm clueless i have no yeah, idea I'm, pre- I'm pretty sure i'm pretty sure that was her because um obviously the one eye polar bear has some significance because we see it across the road and then she was like looking at it and shook by it and then also obviously whoops okay obviously there um there there was a call back to her mom like later in the episode you know which will which will get to mm-hmm. the conclusion of the episode so so yeah like i feel like that was that was like the young version of her yeah I, when danvers was looking through her stuff she had there was a stuffed polar bear missing an eye in her stuff too. Mm. And that was Leah's stuff. I don't know. And maybe it was just a, you know, coincidence. You got a polar bear and it's a child and eyes get out all the time. But I didn't think it was I thought it was kind of strange. Um before we conclude, I'm gonna jump on Oliver right quick. Oliver was an engineer, did they say, at the station at one point and yeah. he left. Yeah. Okay, so he seemed utterly shocked that they were dead, that all of the the um, 
the scientists were dead, but yeah. it was like a like a oh my goodness, it happened kind of shock versus oh no, who killed him type of thing. You know what I mean? Like I guess if in the grand scheme of things, you can think, okay, well, something must have happened at the station. Something blew up or whatever mm -hmm. else. But it seems like he almost would know what would happen for them all to have died. Because mm -hmm. he had like this, it was it was a look of shock beyond the fact that they were just dead. It was almost like, if they, if they are dead, then this is why. And oh my goodness, what have we done? Um, and speaking of what have we done... <laughs> Anders. Okay. Mm -hmm. This was the part of the episode that I I want your take on because I had a thought. Mm -hmm. And I think this is where we're getting to the point where they're purposefully blurring the line between mm -hmm. what Rose said about mental illness and spirituality. Okay. Anders <clears throat> was freaking out, rightfully so, because his arms missing, his legs are missing. They've had to amputate everything. He, I'm sure he was he blind. I'm assuming he's blind too. Yeah, his yeah he can't. Yeah, so everything he can't see either. Yeah, he can't see anything. And I think this is me because Evangeline was the only person in there. They already sedated Anders. I think she imagined that interaction with him sitting up. And saying your mother is waiting for you. I could be wrong. It may have actually happened. Because I'm not sure he even knew she was in the room. Hmm. I know he knew uh, Damage was in there because she was talking to him. But I don't remember Evangeline saying anything. And I don't remember her saying that they would be in there. But that doesn't mean that he didn't know she was there. Do you think that actually happened? Like, Do you think he really sat up and was like, Evangeline, your mother... <laughs> <laughs> Your oh, that, that, for you. that, yeah, that was that was my take too. Because once again, she's the only one there, and we already know that. Um, like, not even being funny, she suffered a concussion earlier in the episode. Mm -hmm. Like, like that that's a concussion. So, if I had to guess, considering that she's the only one that's seeing it, like, yeah, I, I think that is a bit of a um, hallucination. Okay, last part. This one, we, we wrap this up quick, yay. Um, <laughs> Annie. So Annie has the spiral tattoo. When they asked, I think her name was Sarah, about it, she said she dreamt it. And she kept dreaming about it until she got the tattoo and the dreams went away. They finally found, found her phone, that Peter Pryor, he's, he's crafty. But they got into her phone and she did like a Blair Witch type recording so here we mm -hmm. go again true detective Blair Witch Project and she is saying my name is Annie and this is what I found do you think she found the spiral like whatever whatever cave or Evangeline was saying she went to she was like there are no caves in this area do you mm -hmm. think that she was searching for it or something was pulling her towards it and she found it or this is just she just happened to be moments before her death. And of course she recorded it because who would want, you know, just in case y'all can find something. This is, this is where I am. Yeah. So some that we did mention that, and, and I think you just alluded to it. There's some type of cave or like hideaway or like something like out in the ice. So that must have been, that must be what she found because I do know like, um, in the trailer and also in like the what's to come thing, you do see um, Navarro and Danvers like walking through something that has like the big spiral. So um, the dream part is interesting though, because like you and I, the audience, we know that this spiral has significance, but if you, if you like had a dream and you got that tattooed, you would think it's insignificant until you find out that it actually exists out in the world. And you'd be like, how the hell did I even, and once again, this is Alaska. So it's not like, it's not like you would see that anywhere else. Um, so yeah, the, the dream is the interesting part, but yeah, I think obviously like where she was, was, is going to have significance to the, to the, case overall yeah 
Well, that is the end of the episode. Um, any any thoughts? Any um, I guess predictions or I mean, it's three episodes left. You got to stick with it. We got the slow one out of the way, so maybe yeah. it's just full steam ahead for the rest. Yeah, and, and just to be clear, like I don't, I don't, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. I'm just like. What what are you trying to show me? And I feel mm-hmm. like, and I feel like once again going back to the MCU example, I've already alluded to this. I feel like the the climax is going to be a big Easter egg. Will that make it worth it for you? Um, I'll have to see. I'll, I can't say. I can't say yet. I'll have to see. If this if if this ends, if they have another one, would you watch? You mean like a like another like true detective? Another series? true detective, yeah. Not not another true detective okay. night country, but like another yeah, yeah, another installation of true detective. Would you watch? I mean I'm I'm down, but True Detective, Birmingham, just... Alabama. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> It'll be interesting. It'll be very, very interesting, you know? Yeah, the two two guns videos, the prime suspect. Yeah. <laughs> and Carlos. <laughs> Carlos. No, yeah. they didn't detect- no, those uh, are the detectives. Those, those are the detectives. detectives. Yeah. We, we do this case together, and that's it. That's it. Yeah. But no, um, but no, I would I would I would keep watching. I feel like they're um are more stories in this world, but once again, I feel like I feel like they should have kept the tone the same. They should have kept the tone and the feeling of True Detective the same because that, like, that was the one thing that didn't need to be changed. Like just the look and the tone and the yeah, yeah. It's 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 brought a lot of elements that I wouldn't have expected as far as you know Lovecraft and and the um. I guess the spiritual world in itself. I like the fact that they got the culture part in there. That's cool. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, I don't know. I, I don't I don't hate it. I'm I'm looking forward to it. I'm actually to the point where I really want to know what happened in both cases. I want to know what happened with Annie and with the scientists. However, I think I'll be a little disappointed if it's um something supernatural because that's not what I expected. But I ain't gonna be mad. Like, you know. I but I can't yeah. see how it cannot be at this point, because you know, unless, like Rose said, I'm confusing mental illness with the spiritual world. Because Travis, that happened. Like that ain't that ain't just made up. Travis was out there doing a macarena and led her to the scientists. So to say it's not some supernatural aspect of it, that would be foolish because it's clearly there. But I wonder how much of it is really going to have to do with Annie's murder. And mm-hmm. the scientist too. And where's Clark? That's the other thing. Where is he? And who is she? Who did they wake up? Yeah. Let's oh, see. yeah. One one thing I failed to mention. So the details, and, and of course we can get out after this. So the details about like their death, um, which is kind of like what I thought from the jump, based on how they were organized. Um that the, the vet guy, he believes mm-hmm. that um, they died of shock and they froze in the ice because of like their expressions. And that I can buy because they look genuinely afraid of something because something was chasing them. Well, where are they? I guess they'll answer all that because they still got to fit. I mean, why, why were their clothes neatly piled up? Because again, did somebody do that for them? Mm-hmm. Because like you said if they ran out of there terrified, which it looks like they were, like even from their faces and you know everything else, they were terrified and they they died of what did he say, uh, fright, just pure fright, mm-hmm. and they froze, which makes sense because that would explain why um, Anders or mm-hmm. Lund is that his name, Lund Anders or Anders, whatever. That would Ander, explain Anders why Lund, he yeah. didn't, um, why he was still alive mm-hmm. because whatever it was that petrified them it scared him but he wasn't he wasn't to the point they were so that's that explains why he 
was still alive because they didn't freeze to death. You see what I'm saying? Because I'm like, how did he survive yeah. in the ice and they didn't? But that makes sense because they none of them froze to death. They were already dead. So really, more, more of right. them could have survived that time. I mean, he still died, of course, because there was a lot going on, but still. Mm. Also, 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 I lied. Um, I have one more thing. Um, we we also get the reason why Danvers hates um, Twist and Shout because remember she walks in and Ferris Bu- the end of Ferris Bueller is playing and Twist and Shout is playing mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Um, Twist and Shout was playing when they um, went into Wheeler's house and one of them killed him. So that was a that made her think that of that particular instance. Instance. So that's what that's why she was like, "Now we gotta turn this off, like right now." Yeah, she freaked out. Yeah. And so for the last three episodes, I want I wonder if they're going to say what happened to Leah's dad. They don't have to, but it, it kind of feels like they should. Um, mm-hmm. It seems like um, Evangeline's sister is is on a decline. Mm-hmm. Like I don't know what's what's thro- what's triggering her, what's doing it, but it seems like she's on a decline. And I might be saying that because I I haven't seen anything previous. This might, but this might be how she is all the time. I don't know because nobody really seems shocked. They're sad when it happens, and they call you know Navarro when it happens, but they're not like you know it's worse than it was. They were just like, yeah, it was bad. So mm-hmm. probably want to go check it out. So I don't know. I want to see where where she fits in, and I see it really, and, and you know, of course, find out what happened to everybody. So fingers crossed we get that. Oh, and the water. Did you see that water? Yeah. The when she was washing her hands. That's terrible. Mm-hmm. No wonder the baby didn't make it. They they should pay for that. And I can understand why they're angry because that, that shouldn't be happening. You know, we've got real life consequences. We know all about people not having clean water. You know, we know all about that. But mm-hmm. Somebody should have to suffer those consequences, and it shouldn't be the people that live there. Right. Uh, but it is what it is. Um, that's all I have for now. That's all I have as well. We shall see more on Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Maybe I'll be here next Sunday on this side. Maybe Ronnie will be back because he loved the episode. Who knows? We'll see. Day by day. I didn't. Yeah, week by week. I didn't hate it. It was just like, like yeah, but. Mm. Until next time. Peace. Peace.